This is the story of the attack of the sand monster. You can read along with me in your book. You will know it is time to turn the page when you hear the chimes ring like this. Let's begin now. It was nighttime on the planet Aris. At the Castle of Lions, the members of the Voltron Force slept peacefully. Suddenly, the stillness was shattered by the blaring of a headquarters alarm. Princes Allura, Keith, Pitch, and the others rushed to the command center, where Koran sat at the computer terminal, his face grim. I've just gotten an SOS from my old friend, Professor Sarwa, on the sand planet. He says King Zarkon is planning to turn the sand people into vicious roll beasts. The princess looked at the monitor, which showed one of the little sand people. But Koran, those people are shy and timid, not at all warlike. Maybe so, but according to the professor, Hagar the Witch has some way of changing them. I think you and the rest of the Voltron Force should look into this right away. Far across space, on the planet Doom, Hagar explained her wicked plan to King Zarkon and his son, Prince Lotor. I assure you, your majesty, that my cell amplifier will transform the gentle sand people into the most fearsome invasion force you've ever dreamed of. Very well, then. Lotor, you'll be heading up this operation. If it succeeds, the galaxy will be ours for taking. <laughs> Meanwhile, the Voltron Force, in their five lion craft, descended through dusty clouds to the barren surface of the sand planet. Keith radioed the others. Professor Sarwa should be somewhere in this area. Let's split up and scout. Pidge watched his friends disappear in the distance. Then he turned and guided his green line across the bleak terrain. As he came over a sand dune, he saw a bright flash in the sky. A jet starboard! Unidentified strato spacecraft off ahead! He looked on, amazed as a gigantic tower rose up out of the desert floor. The mysterious craft landed there, and the tower disappeared once again beneath the sandy surface. What was that? I'll move in for a closer look. As Pidge started forward, two monstrous snakes burst from the ground and grabbed the legs of his lion craft. Take him off, green lion! Check! Just then, his radio crackled to light. Attention, Lion Craft! Use the voltage defense! Hurry! Too desperate to ask whose voice it was, Pidge sent out a surge of electricity. The snakes writhed and fell away. On the sand dune above Pidge, a man sat on a strange, horse-like creature. I'm Professor Sarwa, and you must be part of the Voltron Force. I hope you didn't mind my advice. Are you kidding? Thanks, Professor! Those snakes guard Prince Lotor's underground base. If we're going to stop him, we'll have to move quickly. First, you and your friends should meet the Sand People. Pidge contacted the others, and the Professor led them to a cave, where he asked them to leave their lion craft. Your ships would scare the Sand People. It's better if you ride in from here on unicorses like mine. The Voltron Force mounted up and followed the Professor to a low, flat plain. As they watched, dozens of sand people burrowed their way out into the sunlight. The princess hopped to the ground and gathered one of the creatures into her arms. Oh, Professor, they're so cute. Lotor will turn them into monsters. Believe me, princess, he can do it. I'm naming this one Sandy, and I'm giving him my bracelet as a gesture of friendship. Before she could say more, they heard a spacecraft high overhead. Keith looked up. Lotor's ship! It's going to land! The sand people dove for cover beneath the surface. The ship touched down, and Lotor issued his orders. Skull tanks into attack formation! Scoop up the sand people! As the tanks did their evil work, Professor Sarwa led the Voltron force back to the cave. Soon, five new shapes appeared on the horizon. Keith and the others had retrieved their lions and were ready to defend their new friends. Blast them, team! They're catching the little guys! But Lotor was too quick. Five well-aimed laser beams sent the lion craft tumbling to the ground. 
Lotor grinned in triumph. They're already trapped. Now I'll bury them forever. Activate sand wave. An enormous mound of sand bore down on the fallen rescuers. A few moments later, Lotor and the captured sand people were headed back to the base, and the Voltron force was trapped deep beneath the ground. <laughs> At the base, Lotor chose his first victim. You, with the bracelet, you'll be easy to identify. He pushed little Sandy forward and hooked a control unit to his chest. Activate cell amplifier. Laser beams shot out, and Sandy began to grow. Lotor looked on eagerly. It's exactly as Hagar said. The bigger he gets, the meaner he becomes. Moments later, the gentle Sandy was a giant robeast. Before Lotor could change any other sand people, the floor began to shake, and five objects came hurtling through the wall. It was the Voltron force in their lives. Led by Hunk's yellow lion, they had tunneled their way into the underground fortress. Lotor shouted orders. Stop them! They've come to rescue the sand people! As the battle raged, Lotor's underground tower rose up to the surface. The Voltron force freed the little sand people, then took off into the dusty sky. But something was right behind them. Lotor's new robeast. Pitch was the first to see it. I hate to say this, Princess, but that robeast looks like one of the sand people. Look at its bracelet. That's Sandy. The giant robeast took a mighty breath and blew, sending the five lions tumbling to the ground. The robeast advanced. <laughs> As the Voltron force tried to right themselves, Princess Allura called out to her friend. Sandy, I gave you the bracelet. Don't you remember me? The Robeast paused for a moment and looked down at its wrist. Then, at Prince Lotor's urging, it moved forward once again. Good work, Robeast. Now, crush them. Inside the Black Lion, Keith and two of the rescued sand people watched. A Robeast is coming to finish us off. Okay, team, it's time for our last resort. Let's form Voltron. Keith barked out instructions. Activate interlock. Dinotherms connected. Infracells up. Mega thrusters are go. The five lions zoomed upward. Form feet and legs. Form arms and body. And I'll form the head. Now, high above the sand planet, a new figure strode across the sky. Voltron, defender of the universe. The rubies flashed out, but Voltron was too fast. In one lightning move, he swatted the rubies to the ground and pulled the control unit from its chest. Lotor looked on in horror. We've lost control. The rubies is shrinking back to its normal size. Voltron, you've won this battle, but I'll be back! As Lotor and his troops withdrew, Princess Allura landed and hurried to the side of her friend. Sandy, are you all right? Wake up, please. Sandy lay very still. Then, slowly, his eyes opened and he smiled. Sandy was going to be just fine. The sand people gathered around, and Professor Sarwa joined them. Princess Alora, we are grateful for everything you've done. Believe me, the sand people won't forget this. Their planet was safe once again, thanks to Voltron, defender of the universe. That was the end of the story. If you would like to hear it again, turn the tape over.